Hello everyone, it's Sunday once again. Um, it's now two o'clock in the afternoon here in the UK. Um, good morning, oh, sorry, good evening Manila and good morning New York. Um, welcome to another episode of Ask the Drummer. And today um, my guest is really, really special because um, if it wasn't for this awesome drummer, I wouldn't be doing this Ask the Drummer podcast. Um, for those of you who have actually been following Ask the Drummer since its inception, um, probably know you, know, the, you already know the story behind um, the creation of Ask the Drummer. But if you don't know it yet, uh, let me just bring in my guest, the awesome drummer of Balaam and the Angel. Please welcome Mr. Daz Morris. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for that very warm welcome. <laughs> Hello, Des. How are you? I'm super. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, all right, Dad. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I've got to my phone now. Oh, hold on. I'm just like, <laughs> there you go. The husband's just walked in asking for the drummer. <laughs> I talk for the for his phone. So, <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. So, um, do you want to say, um, Hello to a guest. Oh, let me just say hello to Pete Brown. He just joined us. Hello, Pete from um, Evil Blizzard. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, and Ginnel you know, and you know as well. <laughs> yes. Excellent man. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Um, yeah, yeah I've right. told Hi you. To everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I've told you uh, the story before how I got to um, create or start this as the drummer. Um, it was on your birthday, the 27th of June yeah, yeah, uh, this year. <laughs> okay. uh, I posted a birthday great, a greeting on um, my Facebook wall because I normally do that, you know. So, like, especially with I've got a photograph with uh, with the musician, I always do it on their birthdays and stuff. And um, a friend of mine, um, Denise, I don't know if she's watching at the moment, hopefully she is, but Denise so like um, commented on that post. And because I was sort of like, what I did is sort of like say, um, happy birthday to you, Des Morris and something. And I was just sort of like thinking out loud and actually writing my thoughts and said, I've seen a lot of podcasts, you know, and so sort of like, were they always ask for the singer and sometimes the guitarist. But I was sort of like thinking, why don't they ask the drummer? Do you know? Because, um, <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, okay, the singers have a lot of stories, interesting stories to tell about the band and themselves. But I just think drummers are so awesome. They also have uh, amazing stories to tell about the band. <laughs> about themselves so i was thinking oh my god why is it why is it that they don't do that they don't ask the drummer oh, i was bad so, from doing it <laughs> 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 yes, yes, that the band will never rule me out uh, to do an interview <laughs> at any time um it's so, oh, brutally honest and uh, foot in mouth disease um so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, i say things i shouldn't say <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so Denise uh, like commented on the post and she said, well, um, you just got yourself a job there. And then another another friend of mine, uh, Tim Wright, I don't know if she's if he's watching, but he's a fellow record collector. And he also said he agreed to it and he said that you do a great job. So I was all like thinking, oh, my God, maybe I could do it. If if they don't want to ask the drummer, maybe I will do it myself. I will ask the drummer. <laughs> I will ask the drummer myself. So so I did. So so like thinking, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this podcast and ask you. So I've sent messages to some of the drummers that I already know, like yourself, you know. And and then thankfully, I mean, I've been so blessed that most of you said yes especially when you said yes to me i mean because you're the reason why i did it anyway so so when you said like yes you do it and that you love the idea then i was yeah. like oh my god this is this is gonna be good so thank you so much thank, well, thank you, you for the 
<laughs> so, but, but um, oh, let me just say hello to uh, another friend who just joined us, Monty Mendigoria. He's in Manila, actually. He said, good afternoon, hi, and hi, Des. And he said that, yeah, he agrees that drummers are awesome because you really are. You you are awesome. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So last time I saw you was at the O2 Academy in Islington. That was like Ooh, three right. years. Yeah. yeah. Three years ago now. It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was a brilliant. That was a brilliant gig because you had um, Jay Aston as well. Yeah, it was um, yeah. and good uh, I think the nineteen nineteen were there. Yeah, I remember. Very good. Yeah, so that was, yeah. That was a, a splendid night. Yeah. Yeah. How have you been uh, since since the last time I saw you? <laughs> Pretty bored, to be honest. <laughs> like the, the the rest of the planet, I think. Uh, lots of gardening, as you as as, as I spoke to you about. Um, very little play, um, so I've only I think I've rehearsed five, six times this year, but all in the last week. <laughs> We've got a gig next week, um, but, um, but yeah, doing lots of nonsense things and enjoying the sun. And the, yeah, the yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you're actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. Write some songs as well, so <laughs> I'm gonna do that. So yeah. Well, you're you said you're rehearsing, but you're actually rehearsing not for Balam and the Angel, but for another band, right? Well, for both bands, yeah. Of the whole last yeah, week. yeah. The whole whole of last weekend was spent spent with uh, Balam and a couple of big ends before, and I've got the other the other project that I do, which uh, is Live and Let Rock, which is an out and out um, rock covers band. So it's all Van Halen, Deep Purple, Def Leppard, all those sort of things. You know, yeah, yeah. Fighters, and then we're gonna do. You know, Bike rallies when we can get them because they're fantastic events to do, and not anywhere else. So, um, so yeah. it keeps me busy. It keeps those fingers moving and the and the feet moving where when Balam aren't playing. So yeah, well, I saw the Facebook page. I actually liked it because there's um, you did a cover of Highway Star. Oh yes, ah, I've always movie. I've always <laughs> loved that song. Um, yeah. even when I was a kid, because it's just so that's such a powerful song. Yeah, well, that's so what I. I, I yeah, sorry. I, I grew up in all, all that sort of music. Um, yeah. So living living where we live in the Midlands, um, it was very very sort of free, um, free Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, um, which we were growing up on. And then you know, towards the end, um, Van Halen cropped up. You know, you know, when I was about fourteen or whatever. So and then you yeah, know, with the punk explosion at the same time. So. But, but that's all the sort of things I, I grew up on. So I just go and play my record collection um, when they're on band days. So it's fantastic. I <laughs> get a lot of drums. So. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Well, welcome. This is like the official one. Welcome to Ask the Drummer, episode nine. Yeah. And today, it's all about you, Des Morris. I like the sound of so, it. Yeah, <laughs> but before we start, let me just say hello to um, the our friends who joined us. There's Waka, Waka Staffel. He's a drummer uh, from uh, a Liverpool band called Hegarty or Hegarty or I don't know how to say it, but Hegarty. Um, and of course, my husband is also watching. He always watches me. Yeah. And Trevor, Trevor Palmer said hi, Anne and Dad. So thank you for watching, okay. guys. Thank you so much. So let's start from the very beginning. Yep. Um, now, Wikipedia says, I looked up uh, Balam and the Angel. Oh, by the way, um, if anyone saw, like, um, uh, asking or interested, according to this, there's no right or wrong way of saying, because I used to say Balam, Balam and the Angel, but because you say Balam, so now I'm also saying Balam. And, you know, my friend, my colleague, uh, Neil Barker from King B, he also says Balam. So yeah. from now on, I'm going to say it that way. Yeah, so it's yeah. Balam and the Angel. But anyway, so I looked it up on Wikipedia. Um, it's kind of confusing what you've got there. It's, it's because... incorrect. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. It's nothing to do with the band. You know? so, anybody Cause... can write into Wikipedia, can't they, and, and, and give their version of of, of anything? So, um, so perhaps, perhaps we should go and correct it. Well, well, I will. I will sort of like just say what it says on Wikipedia. It's um, it says you're a Scottish rock band, formed or founded in Cannock, 
but the origin is Birmingham. <laughs> but um, Cannock is actually in the county of Staffordshire. That's correct. So I was, so yes, let me just sort of like get this straight. You were born in Scotland. Absolutely. That's, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. we're all Glasgow but, regions, really. So we're just, we're just on the outskirts of Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, according to Wikipedia, it's Motherwell. Is yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah no, I think I was born in Hamilton. And Mark or Jim were born in Motherwell, um, and they're all just basically suburbs of Glasgow. And then uh, I think when we were about the, when I was about the age of one, one or so, our parents moved down here because they bought the house up there. Then the council bought it off them at the, the amount they paid for it, demolished and put a road through it. And they, they were, I think they were fed up by then. And then you know, there was lack of work in Scotland, so they moved down here, um, like, like the whole of Scotland, did, to be honest. And um, yeah, we grew up in Cannock, which is 18 miles north of Birmingham. So it's, it's, it's a fair distance from Birmingham, it's, really. And, yeah. um, and that's where we basically, uh, took, until the band took off, we were all living there at home. Other than Jim was yeah. at uh, university in, in London. So I just grew from there. Yeah. So um, what's kind of like when you were like uh, a kid, when you were growing up, like the music scene in Canada? I've only yeah. been, yeah, you know, I've been there once. I've been yeah. to Canada once because, no. um, yeah, because um, I had a pen friend that I visited because mm. when I was in the UAE, when I was living in the Middle East, I used to have loads of pen yeah. friends. And one of them was this girl who lives in, I don't know if she's still there, but it, she lives in Canada. And when I came over here, I visited her, and I, it's I don't know how to describe it, but it's all it's like um, in the Philippines we say it's like an upmarket subdivision, which is like really posh and stuff in a way. So, <laughs> well, that's where she that's where her place looked yeah. like to me at the time. Yeah. Um, but it's a shame that I've lost touch with her. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, yeah, historically, Cat County was very much a coal mining town. There was a few pits um, around the air, the, around the area, and um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a very much a, a, work, a working environment. Um, and yeah, there's no, there's, no, there's no Silicon Valley there or, or, or technology. It, uh, it is a pure, purely working town, and it was very much uh, we growing up rock, um, very much. Uh, um, focused on rock, rock music. Um, I mean, proper old rock, you know, denim leather, leather rock, okay. um, and that's that's where our, 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 our bringing came from. Uh, and it wasn't until really until punk broke out that things yeah. started to change. You know? So, um, but no, it was a great place. I've got thousands of friends there. I was there last night, uh, a friend's wedding. So, yeah, in Canada, yeah, oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't live there now, do you? No, but my father still lives there. I must still go across and go to the local clubs with him. Because we grew up from uh, we grew up in a, in a working men's club environment um, from the, the age of eleven onwards. Um, I was a semi-professional <laughs> musician uh, playing in working men's clubs every Friday and Saturday with with Mark and Jim. Um, and that's that's where we did our apprenticeship uh, and we learned to play. All oh, right, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So you've so, always thought like so was that your first band? Always been with the family? Yeah, Did you have a band but, sort of like away from them? Away from yeah, them? a short period when when Jim um, left school and went, went down to university um, to, to, yeah, to get his degree in music. Um, Mark and I both had separate bands we went and played with. Um, yeah, I think Mark, Mark, and Mark and I had one. I had two or three, and they varied from uh, rock to. Um, to um new wave industrial so um but yeah yeah so we've doubled right yeah. so um you started very early you started like you said you were 11 yeah and you were with your brothers with mark yeah. and jim now yeah. who decided what going to do so like who decided that mark's going to be the singer jim is going to be the guitarist and you're the drummer it's very much parental influence, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mark and Jim both started learning classical classical guitar when they both reached the age of nine. And then when I got to the um, followed on uh, when I got to nine, my father said, "Do you fancy playing the drums?" <laughs> and then our, our first ever singer was actually our dad. He was um, always wanted to to sing, and um, so he started. And I think he, after after yeah a short while, he felt he was too old to sing. Then they brought a girl in to sing. And they did that for yeah, two or three years. And then she yeah. went off to university and they brought another singer in. 
and yeah. uh, made two more singers. Then eventually, um, he ran its course, jumped off to university, and me and Mark went, started doing our, our own bands. And oh, then, okay. um, then once Jim about, started, yeah, so, you've got a sister, you said. What about your yeah. sister? Did she play with you as well? Yeah, she started learning to play the piano. So I think she got to about grade, uh, grade six. Uh, but she, she just didn't fancy it. Uh, it wasn't for her. So uh, she, she, she chose not to go down that path. <laughs> oh, <okay>. yeah. <laughs> but did you yeah. ever saw like, was there ever a time when you said that, no, I don't want to play the drums. I want you to be a singer. Oh, a billion times. Uh, no, <laughs> not, not be a singer, just, just not play the drums. And Because um, when you, I mean, when, by the time I was at the age of 13, 14, sort of playing around the working in clubs, the, the, the shine had gone, had gone off it, and uh, it wasn't quite the, the, yeah, the, the, that, that enjoyable. Uh, but he still did it, and yeah, uh, I was about 14, 14, 14 and a half, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, that's when Jim packed up to go, to, uh, go, go down to London. So um, I, I we, we clocked up quite a few gigs in, in those years, but we're, we're playing at least twice a week, every week without fail. Um, and and that, what that was the name of the band? What was the name of the band? Various names. The the best one was when we actually had a go at being a new wave punk band. Um, it was called The Heat, and um, did about ten shows and got banned from the working clubs because people started throwing chairs on stage. And that. Oh no! <laughs> They'd read the song that that's what you do when you go to see a punk band. You you, you, you do those sort of things. And, and apparently, it, um, in the old days. The audience was sort of like spit at you or something like that's their way of showing you their appreciation or something. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. Yeah, because I remember saw so, like seeing a documentary with um uh Joe Strummer of uh, the clash. Yeah. And apparently because because the audience was sort of like spitting everywhere and stuff, because that's oh, how they used to do it, you know. That was awful. Oh. I saw the clash in seventy eight in Wolverhampton, uh, on the Tommy Gun tour. And it was yeah. just a wall of spit. It was horrendous. Oh my god! And, um, and the slits won that night as well. And the band called Innocence, and they absolutely got got pounded with spit. It was vile, absolutely horrendous. Oh god! And, it, uh, and it was, uh, there was lots of fighting in the audience. So I mean, it's a brilliant gig, other than those two things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they so, wouldn't yeah. do that. Now. I mean, no way that that's going to happen now. No, <laughs> but no. anyway, let me just uh, say hello to Marcus Gully. He, uh, he said, "Good afternoon." He's just joined us as well. You I probably... saw him last night. <laughs> oh, you saw him? <laughs> he's not the one who got married, was he? <laughs> no, no, no. He's one, one of our best muckers got married, Eddie Griffin. Yeah. So. <laughs> and also Jonathan, Jonathan Barrett. Um, yeah, he also said that the lead singer of Doctor and the Medics on the stage saying "gob on me," "gob oh. on me." And it's like something. <laughs> And hello to Mandy Edwards as well. So hello, um, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, so, right. Um, the name Balaam and yeah. the Angel, how did that come about? Well, that's a, that's a bit clever uh, now. <laughs> basically what it was, we were searching and searching for a name. And um, we were struggling. We are trying to put a really short one word names and the rest of it. And um, we had an old children's Bible that Mark was given when it, uh, one of his Christians. And instead of having all the, the, the like you got the Bible, you got the chapter this and blah, 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 all the different books and numbers, all the rest of it, uh, it actually had headings of stories and they cut it short and just picked out uh, some particular stories. And the yeah. one story was called Balaam the Angel. And the base of the moral of the story is think for yourself. So, and um, yeah, we're, we're off the. <laughs> going off at that point trying to, trying to be clever and, 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 and imaginative and and that we thought it's a nice name it doesn't conjure up too much you have to think about it and um when we get interviewed moral of the stories think for yourself listen to the music and you decide hey if you like it or not oh. <laughs> it's basically where the name came from and that was from the um, uh, chapter two to the book of numbers and chapter two obviously where we got our, our own record label name from so yeah i was i was gonna say because uh, i looked it up on again i looked it up on wikipedia because yeah. i told you earlier on that i actually stayed up until six so like googling everything <laughs> about yeah, <good> <laughs> angel. but yeah i was gonna say that it's like um it, balam is um apparently uh, a soothsayer 
or diviners or like from the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bible. Well, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the and the story of um, Balaam, so like from that chapter 22 of um, the Book of Numbers, like he yeah. said, you know, which is, and I thought it was all like, the, sec the next question I was going to ask you is, are you religious? Or is that what it's about? Or? No, we're all brought up um, in our childhood as, as Roman Catholics. We're brought, brought up Catholics. Um, you know, came from Glasgow. It's, um, it's uh, just, yeah, you, 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 yeah, tattooed and um, tagged at birth. And yeah, hence the reason I support Celtic as well. We won today. Anyhow, that's another story. Um, <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're originally brought up Roman Catholics, but we, we're, we're not practicing Catholics at, at all. Um, yeah, well, that's frowned upon, I don't know, but um, yeah, so it's, it's something we, we tend to leave behind. Yeah, oh, right. so, so they're right and wrong, which is yeah, it's just, just the way it is. Yeah, <laughs> well, when I found out about Balaam and the angel, it was actually when I started collecting records. Yeah. And that was really strange, but in 2014, because um, I, I don't know if you know, it was, I'm originally from the Philippines mm -hmm. and we yeah. used to have sort of like this radio station that plays sort of like British music, or American music as well, and we call yeah. them New Wave and stuff. But um, I didn't really get to hear any Balaam and um, the Angel songs until sort of like say 2014. Yeah. Um, and this one, I found this at yeah. a record shop, and I just thought it looks fantastic because the art, the, the, the sleeve art, the art itself, yeah. and it's gatefold. And look, you've already signed these as well. Yeah. So <laughs> it's gatefold. I, I just thought, well, I'm gonna give this a try because it just we it looks amazing, That's and I love it. I, yeah. yeah, I love this album. Um, and then we have this music groups on Facebook, like mainly Filipinos, you know, like Filipino music fans and stuff. And I didn't know at the time that there are actually um, uh, Filipinos who are into Balaam and the Angel because they've been posting um, songs from there. I was like, oh, my God, I missed out. You know, I missed out big time. So I didn't know that you know, you've already got a following. Maybe the goths, you know, like the yeah. fans of goth music in, in the Philippines. Yeah. Maybe they're the ones who actually know about the song. Because, um, oh, well, or maybe it's also called New Wave. Because it's like for us, you know, yeah. punk, uh, New Wave, New Romantics and goth. They're also like just under this one umbrella of mm -hmm. New Wave music, we call it. So, um, so yeah, I listened to this and I thought, God, this is so good. Especially the last song, which is nothing there at all. Ooh, that's I love that. Really I love that so much. And I looked it up on YouTube and it wasn't there because I wanted yeah. to share it to my friends. Yeah. It, it wasn't there. So I was like, oh my God, it's a shame. So what I did, but that's not actually, I only recorded it, but posted it or posted yeah. it on my um facebook page but actually it was another song by balam and the angel that i really love it's um family and friends yes which is like the b-side of love me yeah and you know when i said that i i started ask the drummer because of you yeah i created <laughs> i i created a youtube account because of family and yeah, friends please, because please. i thought I wanted to share that song to my friends, but I couldn't find it. At the time, I couldn't find it on YouTube. I mean, people have posted it, uploaded the song a few times yeah. now since. But I just wanted to say thank you to you, Daz, and thank you to Mark, and thank you to Jim for that amazing song that now I've actually got uh, a YouTube account as well. So it's like <laughs> I've been so all my gig videos I've been posting it on on yeah. my YouTube account. So it's like Balam and the Angel are really important to me, even though I'm actually quite new. I'm yeah. still a newbie fan. Oh, but yeah. you know, it's no, it's that's just what, really yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what, that song does mean a lot to the band as well. It, it, it sums up um, yeah, the unity with the following as well. The people you, you, that always follows around everywhere, and uh, well, you know, 
part of it, part of the band in, in some some sort of, some sort of way. But it, that, it was all about that, really. It was a very me- meaningful song to us. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. I just really, you know, I just love it. I'm glad that I've discovered Balam and the Angel. So, um, my first gig was in 2016 at the Ruby Lounge. Oh God, um, yeah, the crazy night that was. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Do you oh, remember very that? good. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I got most of my records um, signed. Yeah, I remember, um, yeah. That gig. Um, now, before that, actually, there was a competition on Balam and the Angels' Facebook page. Yeah. Do you remember it? Did you, did, <laughs> you get a free T-shirt or something? Yeah. <laughs> I won. Did you won it? <laughs> yeah. I won this. Oh, fantastic. I won it. It, it was actually... Um, it says there's a photograph of Mark with yeah. two, so like you know, and it, it, it's the um, it's the guys from um, the Mighty Lemon Drops. So, uh, very good friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know, that's what, when I when whenever I go so like to the Mighty Lemon Drops um, Facebook page. Yeah. I always say you know, I always thank them because I actually won a T-shirt from. A Balm and the Angel t shirt because of them, because of the mighty lemon chops. Oh. And are you, st- are you still, do you still see them though? Yes, yeah, so well, for, 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 uh, Facebook really, especially mainly Dave, Dave Newton. Um, I went to his wedding out in LA, but they're wonderful guys. I mean, the, uh, part of our youth was, was, was many hours were spent in a van going to JB's and back uh, with those guys. Uh, we had a great time. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, that, that's still like the age of Dave in the, uh, over over in LA. He's got a shop out there now. Um, oh right. His, his wife's a lawyer out there. He's met his, he met his wife uh, in London. Uh, yeah, when she, yeah. When she was uh, at uni, and um, I think yeah, her dad's a big lawyer out, out in LA, so he shops and moved back out there and set up home there. So and he's oh. basically Dave's basically John Peel. Uh, it's a good way of describing him. Uh, I've never known a guy so enthusiastic about music across the, every spectrum. It collects every record known to mankind. And, uh, oh, wow. And, uh, that's what he does for a living. He, he, he is um, genuinely uh, yeah, a record collector. And uh, oh, that's a brilliant. He's, I think he's into producing that as well, Dave. So a lovely bloke. Oh my god! I'd yeah. love to like collect every single record. There is. <laughs> but I guess I haven't got. I mean, our flat is not big enough for us. Yeah. <laughs> but what about Keith? What about Keith Howley? I haven't seen Keith for years. Um, so I'm not sure where, where Keith. I think he's back, he's back on now on Facebook because I know um, Titter as well, the singer. He disappeared for a, a while, um, but he he, um, he came back came back onto Facebook after many years. Of, Everybody had, had lost contact with him, so uh, but he's back now, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure well, when they're going to do something, I don't know yet. We'll have to prod Dave, um, see if they're going to play again, yeah. Because yeah. the Mighty Lemon Drops, uh, actually, they were very big in the Philippines. I mean, Filipino yeah. New Waivers really yeah. loved them, and you know, they're one of the uh, bands that I'm really hoping that I'll get to see before I leave <laughs> this planet. It's like yeah. I've got. I wanted to see the Smiths, um, the House Martins, and yeah. the Mighty Lemon Drops, yeah. Yeah. but I don't know. Hopefully, you know, hopefully someday there was a like gig again. Who knows? Yeah. But um, yeah. do you know the uh, photos I've seen of like younger uh, band, you know, like um, Balm and the Angel. Yeah. Um, you've always had short hair, and Mark and Jim got this like. Yeah, mains. Was <laughs> 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 that sort of like um, a conscious thing, or you just didn't have that? Mine doesn't grow as wild as theirs. Um, I've had it shoulder length you know, a few times, but that's about as best as it got. So. <laughs> 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 and everyone keeps on saying it's it be better short as well. So. But maybe it's a bit difficult to sort of like play the drums when you've got all these hairs so all like going up. <laughs> Hide the headphones if you wear headphones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling you before about um, uh, Balan and the Angels Instagram account. Yeah. Um, there's someone there who actually uh, put a comment. His name is Ian McDougall. 
and he's a drummer in Glasgow. A drummer, I know Ian. Um, yeah. Right, he said, I'm going to read it to you because he said, in 1985, I was a very impressionable young beginner and Des playing that big white pearl kit on the tube yeah. was just the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Do you know what I did last night? I actually searched it on YouTube. Yeah. And I totally agree. I agree as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, Ian. Thank you. Um, the tube is like for um, you know in, because you know um, most of the um, viewers or uh, people watching us, uh, some of them are actually in the Philippines. So the tube, yeah. um, it it was like, can I say it's a more cool version of Top of the Pops? Or oh, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> a billion times over. Yeah, <laughs> on Top of the Pops and the Top of the Pops is fantastic as well. <laughs> <laughs> Never quite made it to top of the pot. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no, not here. Oh, so you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you made it on the tube, but you never actually played on the top of the box. No, never, never got, never got the offer. Never got the chart position. I don't think to, to get the offer in the first place. <laughs> but um, yeah, we did one in Italy. Right. Um, let me just say hello again, again to um, Craig Edge. Uh, he's just joined us. Uh, he said, Hello, boss. You're yeah. a drum tech. Of is my drum tech? <laughs> yeah, actually, I think it's. Um, I got his question here. Oh, yeah, it's uh, he said, Um, do you appreciate your drum tech of 33 years? <laughs> That's his question. Tell me, that's paid too much for me to appreciate him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I do. Most appreciated. Yeah. Time to get ready for, for next Saturday as well. <laughs> I mean, are they the ones who sort of like come out? They co they come out before the yeah. game starts, and they yeah, they're good friends that, that um, yeah. come out to do, do every show. Even does every live and let rock uh, rock, uh, live and let rock show as well. So uh, yeah. there's always a it's our stage manager, drum tech, and, and general you know good body. So um, but uh, most appreciated. Oh, well, yeah. there you go, Craig. Yeah, he appreciates yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Jonathan Barrett um, wants to ask you a question. What's your favourite song to play? Oh, no, there we go. That's a good one. Normally ones that are busy, uh, being a drummer, they, 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 that tends to help. Um, obviously, Love Me, which is just an out-and-out -out punk song for me. Um, um, Running Out of Time is another favourite of mine. Um, yeah. I'll never end because it's uh, it's one of those ones you're patting your head and rubbing your stomach. Oh, the so <laughs> balls are going. So people wouldn't, wouldn't realise, but um, it's a hard one to play. The, the hard ones to play are always the, the most fun because it's a challenge. Yeah, these are, these are ones are easy ones. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, the challenging ones uh, I always I always enjoy the most. Yeah. You know when you did that, I mean, um, Carl Henry who was a drummer of um, Half Man Half Biscuit. Yeah, he gave that as an advice. So, like, if you can do, I don't know. Yeah, you can do it like and, yeah it's um, it's it, it, you get your coordination. Yeah, so um, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, you said you love playing "Love Me." That's that's the one that. Oh, was that the one that you played on the tube? Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, fantastic, yeah. that wasn't it? Yeah, that's well, just, you, you yeah. get lost in it, you just get your head down and enjoy it and hit the kit as hard as you possibly can. Um, um yeah. yeah, Mark's Scrimshaw uh said, What about lights? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was like, <laughs> He's that lighting guy, he, he's oh, is that lighting? Okay. <laughs> pre -made. I was all like thinking, was that like a song or there's yeah. like light of day or something? Like, <laughs> so I was all like thinking, was he referring to that as all? Well? No, <laughs> he's a he's he's Mr. Big in the lighting world. He's he's head head honcho at Donington and uh, he's with Black Sabbaths and Dio's um, LD and he's in our lights next week at KK Steel Mill at Wolverhampton. So uh, that is brilliant and he's got some obviously for us like that. I'm looking forward to seeing so. 
Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. And I've got another friend uh, who's joined us. Uh, he's in Manila. Uh, he's get, his name is Gilbert Chan. Uh, he says, hi, Des. Uh, hi. And sorry, he's a bit late or something. But um, <laughs> I've got another question as well from Jonathan um, Barrett, because he said, he said that he loved Balam, Balam and the Angel since you just started and have seen you several times as both support and main band. Yep. And he'd love to know if you're going to be doing any new material soon. That's, oh, that's yeah. his question. We are, actually. Uh, so it's one of those strange quandaries. Sort of, um, I don't, when I go see people, yes, yeah, certain bands. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm an avid Killing Joke man. I absolutely love Killing Joke. It has massive influence on me. Um, when I go to the gigs, do I want to hear new material or do I want to hear the old stuff? And, <laughs> and, uh, and we sort of feel like, do people really want to hear loads of new material? Or do they want to listen to yeah, 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 our classics? Do you know what I mean? Um, but now I've yeah, got some yeah. new material coming, um, believe it or not. Um, you won't see it this th th this side of Christmas, uh, but at some point it will come out next year. And we might just do it in the old formats. We might just put an, e an EP out that we used to do, we used to put four track EPs out. So we may do that. So, but the belters, I'll tell you that now, they're absolute belters. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing them coming out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're also looking forward to it as well. So it's like, um, yeah. um, right, I'm going to ask you about, because um, when we were talking uh, like a few days ago, yeah. um, you mentioned, do you know, um, the Star Bridge bands? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Ned's Atomic Dustbin, uh, The Wonder Stuff, yeah. and Poppy Poppies. itself. Yeah. Um, you've got like a connection to oh, that. Well, we all know each other. <laughs> 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 uh, you're, you're, not, uh, you're about the, the, the family connection. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. no, not only just, no, not just the family connection, but also like musically. Because, you know, uh, when, when we were talking about, um, because you're older than them. You yeah, sort of like, they were yeah. there before. Yeah. Yeah, basically, but, um, when, when we sort of, um, we talked about it before, a band, someone like Tim Manchester would, would have been at the scene for a short while, then uh, some band will come, come, will break the mould, come out of Manchester and, and open the scene. That's basically what happened in Birmingham with Blarm the Angel. Um, but Birmingham had been off the scene, uh, you know, especially with, with, with new music for some time. We managed to break the mould, got signed, and on the back and the, on the back of that, um, the lemon drops, the wonder stuff, the Neds, the poppies, the two of them, which were on our label anyway, all came yeah. came through the uh, the vault, so that, that the whole scene opened up um, for the Midlands. I think later on you got G that's Jesus Jones and that, um, but uh, but yeah, but we're but we're all people that all went to the same club, JB's in Dublin. Um, JB's. Lemon drops, uh, JB's. Uh, other lemon drops that were probably there, uh, slightly ahead of those guys. Um, but the Starbridge boys all, all were born out of a band called From Eden, basically. Um, and um, that would be Miles uh, from the Wonder Stuff, Kurt from the yeah. Poppy, uh, Mark from the Pop, uh, from the Wonder Stuff. Yeah, but they all we all went to JB's, and that was uh, the landmark venue because they, they had all the bands, all the new bands coming up. That was on the, the, the touring um, the touring map, JB's was. Uh, it was on the yeah. circuit, and it, it's quite far from here to, 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 to go to, to see the boat. We'd go, and every Friday and Saturday, if there's nothing on, we'd go to JB's, yeah. and then but we'd that... go to two, two, three, four gigs a week, uh, anywhere, just going to see new bands. You could then, there was plenty of bands, yeah. yeah. So, it's James, you know, like in, in Manchester, it's like we've, we've got or uh, they've got the SN line those days, or maybe in Liverpool, they've got um, they had Eric's. Do yeah. you think? That JB's is sort of like similar to that. that well, it was. It was like, yeah. equivalent. Yeah, in fact, it was the, probably the, the the small venue um, in the, the sort of near yeah, anywhere 20, twenty miles around Birmingham. Um, it was a proper circuit venue. Uh, everyone played there. Yeah, Robert Plant still so, would still be playing there now if it was open. Uh, cause he'd always yeah. go down there and play now and again. So, um, but uh, it's a great place. The great owners. Uh, so it's you. not open. It's not there anymore. Is no, it? it's um. I think it's been bull, bulldozed there. Yeah, they moved it once, once or twice, and they never, never. They tried to make a bigger version of it, but it just never didn't work. Um, oh, so, yeah, for yeah. Every reason it was. 
So, um, yeah. yeah, I think the recession probably killed it off, to be honest. Um, when did it, when, when did they close down permanently? Oh, 2000 or something. All oh, right. It's one of the recessions, I think, I think, I think saw, saw the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but that, that's where we all came from. Uh, it was basically yeah, all born out of JBs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk about Birmingham because um, Ozzy Osbourne, because yeah. do you know when you go to Birmingham, you go to Primark, which is like the biggest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the biggest shop in the UK, the biggest Primark shop. They actually have a mural there yeah. where it says Birmingham is the... Um, birthplace of heavy metal yes the sabs yeah 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 i mean it was that sound that... Tony, 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 his guitar sound it was it yeah but, so um, yeah. That... but also duran duran they're from birmingham right yeah 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 down the cedar club yeah so um... um so maybe they could also say that it's the birthplace of the new romantics or something <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, the London still claim that, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, they probably, yeah, um, yeah, the, the thing, yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. So, we were around that time, but um, that was all kicking off in Birmingham, so yeah, just then the run runner, and uh, but your your band, um, Balam and the Angel, um, you're considered this goth. God, yeah, just, well, we always consider ourselves as just an alternative band, an alternative rock band. That's what we always consider ourselves. I mean, we got born into sort of pulled into the to, to the, the golf scene. I think it's just that we said the label around at the time. Um, and we, we're sort of we're sort of in, in that sort of um arena, but with the different end of the spectrum, we were sort of bright and optimistic. We even wore white clothes originally. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not to oppose the um the movement. Um, but just a little, we're, we're a different offering. Um, we're optimistic, we're bright. Um, yeah, and and they're actually very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the songs, I just yeah. love. Do you know, yesterday, I, well, I was at work, because I listened to um, this um, radio station. When I was a teenager, we had it called WXB 102. Yeah. We, we had it, but it's sort of like... Um, finished in 1987 i think 86 87 but anyway so it's now back but it's online so yeah. whenever i'm at work i actually play that as you know i put that on to sort of like because they play like great music and stuff yeah. and they play um i love the things you do to me last um yesterday while i was at yeah. work and i was all like thinking oh my god this is so good and i'm gonna be speaking to him tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you talk about so sort of like living the dream, you know, we're so yeah. like, I actually am doing it because I can't believe that I'm actually talking to you, you know, talking to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> but anyways, um, right, I've got um some more comments here, Mark. Scrimshaw said that it's going to be a cracking show next week. Um, yeah. and Pete, Pete Brown, he said they just came up, pulled, pulled into the golf scene, and that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, okay, you've got, um, you talked earlier about Live and Let Rock, yeah, that's your other band. Um, yeah. Apart from yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, have you got like gigs coming up? Oh no, sorry, because you've got the alarm gig coming up next. Yeah, that live 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 rock, live live rock gigs come up as well. Um, we've got quite yeah. a one uh, before Christmas. So they're, yeah. they're always good fun, um, especially if you, if you get to play the bike rallies. That they're, they're my favourite. We're, we're suited to bike bike rallies. It's um, it's full on rock show. <laughs> and playing all the, the big anthems from, the, from all the biggest acts. But uh, you know, the K-Case next week, that is going to be one hell of a gig, I think. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's in Wolverhampton. Yeah, with Thieves for Hate, yeah. So yeah. every year for like, the last four years, Kirk's asked us to, to come and do this West World Weekend he has. It's their big fan club, too, that, 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 that he has it once every year. 
yeah, and yeah. Um, it talked us into doing it uh, this year. So we're going to go along. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. So uh, I just wish, I wish that um, Megabus, yeah. I wish they do a sort like a regular service from Manchester to Wolverhampton. Yeah. It's like, I would have loved to be, I would have loved to sort like go and see you there. Yeah. But it's a bit difficult because I don't drive. No. I always no. rely on public transport. Yeah. And uh, with with Megabus, because Birmingham is okay. If you were if you were sort of like playing in Birmingham, that's fine. Because there's actually a um, two forty five service back to Manchester, yeah. so I can go and see you in Birmingham. Yeah. And well, still Christmas be in Birmingham, so yeah. <laughs> we got a little tour at Christmas. You know that boring part in between Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Every yeah. year we, we we used to go out and, and, and do a few shows. Um, and we're going to do it this year for the first time since I can't remember when. I think the Wonder Stuff came out with us last, last time we did it. So, um, but yeah, so we're doing that this year. And Birmingham's one of the shows. Oh, you're doing so, a show this year? And then, yeah, um, is it at Christmas before or before in between, Christmas? In between Christmas and New Year. And it's called the B Tour because we're playing three towns, all begin with the B. <laughs> we're playing Birmingham, <laughs> Bedford, and Brighton. So it's the Tour. <laughs> Has it been um, shared on social media? Or? Yeah, I think it's, it's just like going. I mean, we will we'll flood the internet with it cl closer to the dates. So, um, but um, that'll be. I also want to check it out because maybe I could sort of like go and see you. You know that yep. uh, in Birmingham. Because yeah, at least it's better for me. It's a lot easier for me to get there. There, yeah. there are places. There are certain places like Bristol. I can't get to Bristol, even though I wanted to go there for gigs. Yeah. Because again, you know, public transport from Manchester, you know, it's it's not like unless I'm willing, if I was so like willing to pay um, an extra uh, amount for accommodation and stuff, maybe I could yeah. go. But I don't really like staying overnight when I go to gigs. Yeah. I just wanted to so like, <laughs> I just wanted to so like go to the venue, see the gig, and then so like come back home and then just. Yeah. <laughs> So um, hopefully, yeah, well, hopefully I'll see you in um, in uh, Birmingham then. Yeah. Um, but sure. earlier, yeah. yeah, but earlier when, before we um, went live, we were talking about your vegetables. Oh yes, the good life. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. Yeah. I just, I just think it's amazing that you've actually got this, and it's not like you only started it because of the lockdown because of the pandemic you've actually you said that you've actually had it for the last 15 16, 15, years. 16 years we've been um growing our, our own food food where possible yeah and um living off the land where possible it's great we, we it's hard work it's not it's not for the faint-hearted um but eating your own fresh produce out your garden isn't that's nothing better. I mean, one thing one thing my wife and I like is eating out. Believe me, so we, we like eating good food. So we grow it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you pick up the plant and eat it instantly, there's the, the yeah, it's as good as it gets. So, uh, but yeah. So, um, do you yeah. ever sort like think that maybe you'd like to sell them, or is it just really just for personal use, or? Giving yeah. them to families and stuff. It's completely not agreed is what it is. <laughs> but um, now I mean, we, we give we give stuff stuff away. Do we? we don't sell any. No. So. Um, um, oh, it's, that's it's, 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 it's just it's a pleasure. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. We've got the gym. Gym's the same as well. Um, down in London, um, they've got their own lot that, that, that they grow all their own food as well. Yeah, where possible. Because uh, oh, it's pescatarian. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not vegetarian pescatarian. I, I eat anything. Um but um but yeah, yeah. Jim Jim enjoys that, that same sort of life as well. Mark could give the monkeys, you know what I mean? He's he <laughs> 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 Oh yeah. Um but do you have okay, do you have any drumming heroes? Oh Christ. Every single drummer on this planet has ever picked up a strip, there's something to learn from, from every single drummer. No matter even how bad they are, there's always there's always something that you can, yeah. you can steal. And uh, I mean, when I grow up, when I was growing up, it was people from all like Carl Palmer, um, um, I forgot their names now, uh, Bonham, yeah. um, Terry uh, Terry Baggio, 
um, going up to me up to the, the new wave spectrum. It was um, um, Gang of Four. Um, oh yeah, yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, teardrop explodes. It was everyone, everyone was an influence uh, on me. Uh, but yeah, the Banshees as well. He was a, he was a good influence. Uh, Pull out a killing joke. All, all, all for different reasons. Uh, oh. I, did, I didn't look to copy anyone. I just picked up different things from each and every, every drummer. Um, yeah. Ian Pace uh, from Purple uh, is amazing. Uh, today's drummer, you look at uh, Jimmy Chamberlain uh, from the Pumpkins. He's, he's immense, that guy is uh, an immense drummer. Um, but there's loads of Perkins as well for, um, from Jane's Addiction. There's loads of good drummers out there. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, and they've, they've all got so much to offer, every single one. Yeah. So, uh, Do you still go to gigs? Yeah, where po when possible, yeah. So I'm going to see some, yeah. some lads I saw last night. I want my tickets to see them next Friday. So I'll be at the station in Canada next Friday to see those guys. Oh, right. <laughs> um, and but yeah, so when you, sorry. Yeah, yeah, when you go when you go to a gig, do you yeah. actually sort like check out the drummer? Or <laughs> like... Yeah, I check out all the guys. It's, it's like, I, you, even know, you even know this. Even when we play around gigs, you'll always find us out in the audience watching all the other bands. Um, we're always around watching the bands. Yeah. Um, Ben is sitting in the bloody dressing room. <laughs> yeah. so they get out oh, there. So, yeah. Because, uh, like I say, every, everyone's got something to offer. So uh, I love watching yeah. them. Yeah. So that's all we've done all our lives since we were kids. Um, from the age of like seven onwards, like, parents always took us out to, um, yeah, and there's only clubs and that, but still watching like, live music. Um, yeah. Ingrained yeah. in us. Yeah, I mean, we've got the tattoo, but yeah, but, yeah, that's that. Yeah. But that's so good because. Sometimes you think that the main head or the headliners, they yeah. actually leave the venue, they go somewhere else, yeah. and then they come back when it's already their turn. Don't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? too much, it's too much hassle. I want to go and watch the band and enjoy myself. And, uh, yeah. Even though I'm to drink water, but I've still got a, a, a show to do. Yeah, you know, when we come on, so uh, so how many beers you need, a drummer can, can drink before it affects his uh, hands and legs. <laughs> so, uh, right. Well, Marcus Gully said it's Eddie Grimm. Uh, he's everyone's hero. He is. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I haven't got a clue. Was it Eddie Grimm? It's a canic legend from three. The band was called Three in the Bed. He's now in Rocket Fifty One. Uh, he was the guy that got married last night, and and the men's fella. So, um, yeah, oh, right. part of the planet. So, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> and um, Pete said that he first saw Valarm supporting the cult at Manchester Hacienda. Oh, my oh, god, bloody hell. oh, my god, they, and how he said that he was asking, How did that talk come about? Um, our ritual we got picked up by Zyko Syord, who used to manage the cult. Uh, in their very early days, uh, from death cult through, through to, to, to when they start to become, uh, become the cult, and, that, and we start supporting the the cult at one-off gigs in Birmingham at the Tin Can Club, uh, a place like this, and that's how we got to know them. And when the tour was coming up, we, we put in for it and got it. And because we only had three pieces, well, the cult used to take up a lot of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so you get these uh, well, the small gigs. They're, they're only like five hundred city gigs. So when we first started playing with them, the house end got bigger. Um, but by the time they set all their gear up, they could hardly get anybody on the stage. So we fitted the, the bill as well perfectly. We, we were painless. We fitted on and we bloody warmed the, 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 the crowd up. And we're a bit weird and wacky at this time as well. So um, yeah, they loved us. So yeah, and, and oh, wow. uh, yeah, we did quite a few tours with the cult in the end. God, Hacienda, that's so good. Yeah, actually... yeah. Oh so, wow. God, 1984, 1985. I just wish I was already living here at that time. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. love the agenda and stuff. <laughs> Although <laughs> I've never I haven't actually, you know, I never managed to get inside, you know, go to the agenda, yeah. but it's just the stories that you you know you hear about it and oh it's it's amazing. But anyways, um you been drumming since you were 11 
uh, well, that's why. That was like a long time. Um, yeah. uh, I'm gonna ask you so, like, have you ever had any disasters, like drumming disasters during those years? Disasters? <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. <laughs> We played the I mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, um, like, was there blood or was there sort of like falling oh, over or something? Well, I remember the first time we, we played um, Glasgow Night Moves, funny that was the cult, and um, people were throwing stuff from the balcony because the balcony went behind you, and pipe pots and that were bouncing off your head and, and, off, the, and off the drum kit. And Jim cut his head split open because somebody threw one so full, full of beer and just <laughs> hit his head and split his oh, head open. No. And, um, but yeah, but, but, that was uh, that was part of the apprenticeship, wasn't it? But we, we played Crystal Palace Ball, which is this I think it was anti heroin festival with Hawker and the Spear of Destiny, Destiny and that. And um, we, were, we were on the mid afternoon, and I think I think Mark had a beer too many, and we changed the drum riser. So the drum riser I was playing on was probably twice as high as what we normally jump uh, uh, play on. So Mark decided to jump on the drum riser. Didn't realise how high it was. Caught him on his shins, and he landed on the kit, and the whole kit went over. Everything, <laughs> mid oh so, loads of those sort of things. Jim walked up, walked off the stage in Chicago. He went, walked down the runway in this big venue out there. Missed the runway and landed on the PA desk, <laughs> face down. And loads of thousands of stories. Every band's got them. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh you know, my god, lots of embarrassing moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark Scrimshaw said that you broke your finger at the start of a tour you did in the late 80s. You broke a finger. So. Liverpool, yeah. I went to hit the symbol. The symbol was moving when, what, 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 as when like that, the, the stick and the finger hit the, hit the symbol right on the edge. And yeah. 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 <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so yeah, I've noticed stuff. I broke my foot before we did the four month American tour. I broke my, my my right toe on my right foot right at the start of the American tour. I just had to play with it. You can't cancel the tour, can you? You know what I mean? The tour must go on. So yeah. you just grin and bear it. And I, I, I had to work, basically wear a club foot for about yeah you know, a month and a half while the, the, the toes tried to heal itself. And I can't bend it now. A big toe in the right foot. Oh but, no! Um, oh, well, um, I forgot to ask you earlier. Um, is it easier or more difficult to be playing with your siblings, with family, than playing with other people? I don't know. I, I've never even thought about it. I don't think. I don't think it's any different. Well, so, um, so the, yeah. well, sort of like um, writing, or maybe. Did you sort of like, were you in a band where you actually uh, had like um, writing material and stuff? Or was it always been just with Balaam? Just Balaam, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. it always is, it is somebody comes comes into the to, to rehearsal room with, with an idea and you start busting yeah. around it. Classic old way of writing a song. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone throws the, you know, the, you know, the two hanging in and uh, what comes out at the end is what comes out. So it's it's not really a different thing that when you're playing with Live and Let Rock, and yeah. then you play with your brothers. There's no, no... we haven't really written with the Live and Let Rock yet, so um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's hard to tell. But but Live and, Live and Let Rock are all great guys as well. They've got a lot of yeah. respect and time for. So yeah, if you, if you respect people, it just seems to. Go, I think I think it's the same. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's hard to write with people you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll go on the road. So, go on the road is a very, I suspect you've gone a long tour. You can see people crack one by one. And then we, we, if you've gone on the road for a long time, you're cooped up in a van. To, like, in America, you took 10, 12 hours a day cooped up in a van. Um, it's a very lonely place if, you, if, if you've got demons and issues. So, it's, um, so, well, so going out there with your brothers is brilliant. Go I mean, so, Yeah, so <laughs> that's what I was sort of like thinking. It must yeah. have been so sort of like, Easier or better to have your family with you. Well, it's easier, it, 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 they understand. They understand yeah, they understand yeah. you, and instead of sort of like, uh, have you always been sort of like close to each other? Well, like, extremely, extremely. We've all yeah. done that together. We've went to gigs together. We've always been together, haven't we? We've been since age eleven playing together. So, so yeah, it's um, it's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. 
And I, so we did on the road as well. Because all, you, all, people, all bands do, all, all bands are the same. All you do is, is rip each other to death on, on the road with jokes and, you know, and taking the mickey out of each other. And being brothers, it, it, it's more sort of a duck's back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of the people <laughs> might not share, share that sentiment, uh, but being brothers, it's uh, it's very easy. So, uh, there's nothing else to do all day long. You're in a van for 12 hours. So, you can read the magazine so many times, can't you? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Craig Edge said that Tony Pandy gig oh, uh, was a legendary show. Huge fight, he said. Yeah, not, Do you not, not the <laughs> that was the audience, not the band. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where was Tony Pandy? Is that? Oh, so that? In the mid middle of Wales and the valleys, and um, it, it, the, for some reason the the the, um, the audience went up like a bottle of pop. You know, they just all fight, started fighting amongst themselves, and pff, carnage erupted. So uh, yeah, it was an interesting night that was. Oh, what do yeah. you find that you attract? So, like the kind of audience where they actually so like no, that was just, oh, that was no. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with us. Uh, yeah. Just a crazy venue. It's just one of those crazy nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, oh, uh, so. Same thing happened in the Omaha, Nebraska. I think it was, but we played the place there, and it went up like a bottle of pop for no reason. Yeah. Where's the furthest you've um, played? Um, to... Japan, I think. Um, have you played like in Japan or yeah. somewhere in Asia? No, not, not, not just Japan, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots of places what... we, got, we got have to go to. We never, never got there. We got, we got to go to Australia three or four times. And the record company kept on sticking us back in the studio and said, no, you don't need to go there yet. <laughs> go record some songs. <laughs> we best write them first. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, what's the um reception like in the you know compared to so like in America oh, or? Yeah, it's everywhere. We got somewhere in Japan. They're, they're very fashion led as well. They lo they love bands with images in in Japan. So at that time we, we really fitted the bill with them. And um, we did a TV show when we were out there, a live in concert thing. Um, America varies very much. It's, it's, it's a weird place, America, because you're dealing with 52 different countries, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, nobody yeah. travels in America. Like England, you get people traveling, following you around. You, you don't really tend to get that in America. Um, and we did some real hard touring there, because we had a record that was take, taken off. A lot of the things it was, it was going massive in America. And Americans insisted, this is the record company, insisted you had to, cause you, you had to break each territory. So they'd send it to yeah. territory where the record wasn't getting played on the radio yet. So we'd have to go out there and play play small venues and convert the radio people to put on the, the playlist the following day. Places where we were number one, we never went there. We were thinking, well, yeah, throw the dog a bone. Yeah, yeah. Let's play some somewhere, somewhere that's, that's going mad. You know what I mean? And uh, but, but then yeah, but, but we had to keep on. We did that for four months going around America um, to keep on getting the, the radio pluggers on our side. Uh, but there was, was a album was a bit, big album out there. There was a big singles out there. So it was oh, hard work. Yeah, great work. Yeah, great fun. Oh, I'll do it again so tomorrow, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I asked you this before, um, because you left Scotland when you were only one. So you don't, I was all like thinking, you don't remember much about it, but you still go there a lot, you said. Yeah, and, a, a massive family tree up there. And the most of yeah. all up there. So all our cousins. Every time we go to Glasgow, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy night. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you still... Yeah, a lot of the clubs always turn up at the gig and uh, yeah. then years afterwards, yeah. And you feel Scottish still? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's just way, yeah, because you're brought up by Scottish parents, you, you do Scottish things, don't you? So, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And you were saying before that when, once you get to the border, yeah. your accent changed? You yeah, so like accent yeah. Changed yeah, it tends to go broad Glaswegian, yeah. So, Can you give us a sample? Hi, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, because I was not like thinking. Let's go. You'll find out. <laughs> no, because yeah. um, um, do you know the um, 
the what do you call it? the description of Asta Drummer is actually a, a Bobby Gillespie quote yeah. where he said a band is only as good as its drummer. And you know, Bobby Gillespie's from Glasgow, right? The band's you... never as good as a drummer in my in my in my, in my book. <laughs> 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 There's no band, there's no drama, you know what I mean? Everyone's equal is, is, is important. So, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, thank you. Well, right, one well, last, <laughs> last thing that I want to ask. Have you got any advice um, to all the aspiring journalists out there? Um, yeah, ignore everyone. No matter what anybody tells you, um, if you if you got an eye, there's no right and wrongs in drumming. It's not about four, four, six, eight, or whatever, to, or that beats you beyond there and blah 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 blah. Go with what you feel. Uh, and one thing, one thing I think I've learned over the years, the most is inspiring when I pick up new bands and I start listening to new bands. But they're most interesting when they start their careers because they're naive. Once I start listening to people three or four years down the line telling them you should do it this way, you should do it that, oh, nonsense. It's all the best music I think is when you're naive. It, it, you're fueled with all these ideas um, that nobody's you know um, interrupted interrupted your thoughts, and you just you start doing these wonderful you know, this wonderful music, and that that yeah. you stick to your guns. Yeah, ignore what anybody says. Do it your own way. Oh, that's what that's I do. Brilliant. Yeah, and like I said, no, there's no right and wrong in drumming. Yeah. It, it yeah. I've, I've had to play. To, I'm deaf now. I used to click clack for three or four years, and I'm bloody deaf now. <laughs> and then the one here, and partly cymbals as well. But the click clack the click -clack de de definitely didn't, didn't help my uh, my hearing. Um, but right. yeah, but, but, but they are useful now and again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. All, depends what, all depends what the song needs to achieve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, my, yeah. No, no right or wrongs. Just do it your own way. Oh, that's brilliant. That's so yeah. good. So, what's next for Balam? Balam and the Angel. God, okay, I always still say yeah, yeah. Balam. Still, it's, a mental, it's a mental gig next week, and it'll be, it'll be a cracker. Uh, KK. Oh so, yeah, and so, Birmingham, of course. Yeah, I mean, everyone's fueled up for it. I mean, Christ, we've been sitting, it, sitting, sitting it, yeah, indoors for the last two years. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it'll be a good one next week. And then yeah. uh, we've got the Christmas tour. And then next year it will be very interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't got the full details of what, what, what it holds yet, but next year should be an interesting one. An interesting uh, one. That is so good. And of course, you've got new material as well. So yeah. I'm really, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, yeah. We've got the new one that's just so like uh, Luna Portum official from Dylan, Dylan Morris. Oh, yeah. Dylan's my <laughs> son. And he, his band's called Luna Portum, and they're going to do, oh, they're going to do, they're going to do great things. They are. They're, they're one to watch. Oh, they're playing. Burn, they're playing with us at Birmingham as well, along with Dawn After Dark, are doing the, uh, the Christmas shows. Um, oh, that's Luna so Portum. good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get to like see them as well. So yeah. if I go, you know, if I go to them and go. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, it's it's after three o'clock now and. Thank okay. you so much. Thank yes, you so yeah. much. Thank you, thank, you, thank you, everybody that's tuned in as well. <laughs> Most appreciated. It's nice to be loved. <laughs> no, I'm just really happy that you said yes. I'm so grateful because, do you know, when I go to gigs and I see you, I feel a bit embarrassed or like talking to the band members or because it's like I don't want to take up most of their time. And there are other fans waiting as well. So, what I do is just sort of like ask them to sign it and have a photograph and then go. So this actually gave me an opportunity to speak to you for over oh, an wow. hour. <laughs> we spoke a few times in Manchester, so yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thank yeah. you so much. No, thank um, you for the invite, Anna. And um, yeah. coming down at Christmas, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure you're, you're sorted. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And do you have any last words, final words to our uh, viewers and to our friends? Yeah, buy some bloody tickets for KK's <laughs> next week and the Christmas tour. And the yeah. Christmas tour. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Des. Thank um, you, Anna. Yeah. Thank you very you much. Know. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Right. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.
Oh my God, it's so awesome. Thank you so much for um, joining us, um, everyone. And I'm just so happy because, you know, he's, like I said earlier, that Daz and Balm and the Angel actually played so like a big part in um, creating this Asta Drummer and also my youtube account as well so i'm just so happy that he was here so um thank you all everyone and as always um enjoy the rest of the weekend uh love music love life and love 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 drummers because they're just so awesome thank you and keep an eye out for next week's um guest announcement bye everyone bye